Great, okay, so we've got our clean, damp wheel head. I've got my centered ball, or my, my wedged ball of clay. Um, you can do this with the wheel spinning or you can do this with it being stopped, it doesn't matter. You wanna aim for the center as um, much as possible because the more this thing's in the center to start with, the less centering you have to do, okay? Um, you are also gonna have a, a clean bucket of water, well, or not clean, <laughs> to, to where you're at in the process, but you always wanna have enough water on here so that there's lubrication, right? So that the clay is sliding easily be, be beneath your hands. If you start to get friction or feel warmth, it means you need more water, right? Um, but what you don't need to be doing is grabbing your sponge and like hosing the thing down like that, um, because all the water's gonna do is just go off into your splash pan, or in this case, it would go into your faces, okay? Um, so um, when you're centering, it's okay to go a little bit faster. The first thing I'm gonna do, I've thrown this on. Now I'm gonna just try and grab this clay and push it down, and I'm going a little too fast. Okay, um, and I'm just trying to seal this onto the wheel head to make sure it's really securely down there. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Um, I always am trying to scrape like any excess clay. There will be, as you begin to center, there will be clay that kind of comes off in your hands. Um, and that just has to do with hand position. So if that keeps happening over and over, come see me and show me what you're doing, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do after I have my clay on here, I'm gonna start the coning process. And, and essentially I'm gonna use the flat parts of my hands on either side, not back here, um, because I wanna keep those straight wrists, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna push in and slowly bring my hands up to rise a cone out of this clay. If I come up too quickly, it's going to make it more off-center. So what I'm essentially waiting for is every revolution of this wheel, when it makes one revolution, then I can move my hands up. So I'm gonna really gonna dig in here at the bottom of my hands, and as once I get the clay up, I'm going to actually carefully release because I've run out of water. I can clean this area up down here, just with the back of my thumb. I've got water, I'm gonna start at the, the bottom, and then slowly come up. And this is a, sort of a wedging on the wheel technique. So if there are any errant air bubbles, this is gonna help us to um, get those air bubbles out. So I'm extending my thumb to kind of be a longer brace, working with my hand as a tool. You can still see it wobbling around, which is an indication that it's still off center, and nine times out of 10, it will be at this point. I'm gonna clean up my wheel head. I wanna make sure I have a really nice, clean, kind of 90 degree angle there. You can do that with your tool. Okay, and that is because now I'm gonna take this clay and compress it down. And if the clay is kind of splayed out at the bottom, it's hard to get at it and keep it under control. Um, I will also often hold a sponge in my hand to just release a little bit more water. That may feel a little bit too cumbersome for you as you get going, um, and that might be something you add in. Uh, but I'm gonna start with one hand uh, vertical and one hand horizontal. And again, I'm using the meaty parts of my hands. I'm not using my fingers. And I'm gonna work together and press this clay down into itself, okay? So here's that, um, you'll remember that I told you guys I was left-handed and I throw both right-handed and left-handed in the same process. So this coning down is left-handed because I'm coning down into my dominant hand. This is the hand that's gotta really push back. Um, you may find if you're right-handed, this might be a, a more comfortable um, posture for you, okay? Uh, really doesn't matter which one at this point. So I've got some moisture on my clay and I'm going to press down. And as the clay, as I'm pressing down, if I press down just with my top hand, what happens to the clay there? It starts to go out kind of like a mushroom, right? So. What my, my left hand is doing is pushing it back in so that it stays within the same kind of width of the base of this, okay? Um, and again, this clay is really nice and soft. This is good clay to be centering with. So you can see that the top of this looks a bit more centered than the bottom, and that's because I haven't made it all the way down yet. So as I go down, I start with really a lot of pressure on the top, and I'm ending with a lot of pressure on the side here. And you'll see my arm. I'm kind of adjusting my positioning so that I can come in on the side here. Okay, and then I'm gonna carefully release. If, I, if I'm pushing a lot of pressure and I just let go, what's happened? It's off center. Okay. So whenever you release the clay, whether you're centering or making a pull, you relax your pressure, let your hand slide around, and then carefully release. 
and that's going to allow um, that centeredness to, to stay there. With beginners, um, it will often take you um, maybe three or four times of coning to get it into a centered spot. Okay, so you can cone it down and then you can cone it back up and then cone it down and cone it back up. Okay, and just really what we're practicing this week are figuring out how to get this clay on center. Um, so again, if you're right-handed and you feel more comfortable over here, you're gonna be working on this side. So again, it's my, the, the meaty part of my hand or kind of acting like a rib. And then on the top, I'm pressing from the center towards myself. So kind of on an angle like this, I don't want to have my wrist end up in the middle because what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna get this huge bowl indent. So if you start to have this bowl indent, it means you just need to, you need to adjust where your pressure is so that it kind of is on a slope down, okay? Um, and if it gets too wide, you just come at it and you give it a little bit more pressure on the side and a little less pressure on the top. So that you're really, you'll know that it's on center when you can put your hands on it, and I'm giving it just kind of an equal compression right now. If you can rest your hands on it, it doesn't feel like it's moving, okay? So we are gonna be centering, and um, I'm gonna ask you guys to come in, because we do not have class on Monday because it's Labor Day. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to come in for Wednesday, a week from today, with 15 to 20 thrown centered parts. And so what do I mean by that? Um, you're gonna start by centering here. There's three shapes that I want you to work, work on from this centered shape. Uh, and they will set up the three main basic shapes that we make pottery form from. A flat disc, which will turn into a plate eventually, a kind of a doorknob round shape, which will turn into a bowl, and a taller cylinder or cone, which will turn into cylinder, cup, vase, anything that's really vertical. And so we're gonna be practicing that and we're gonna be working with your fingers and your tools to make different marks. And um, we're gonna then take those parts and build other forms out of them. Okay, so um, I do want you to keep everything that you make so that I can take a look at it, even if it's just like a disaster pile of clay, right? Because and if that keeps happening over and over again, I wanna see some evidence of it so I can help you problem solve why, why it's happening. So let's start here. We're gonna start sort of this, um, this low kind of shape. Um, I'm just gonna take my hand and my sponge, getting a little bit wet, and I'm just gonna use my hand to round this over, okay? Um, I'm pushing in a little bit here at the bottom, and that's just giving me this really kind of big doorknob shape. And this would be the shape that we would start to make a bowl, okay? But we're, we're not gonna worry about really pulling walls, but we are gonna make things hollow. So um, the next step, once you have your centered piece of clay, is to find the center with your thumbs or your fingers, however it feels comfortable. I like this because I feel more stable. I can lock my arms in, um, kind of cradle in the clay. And I want you to go just directly down to the wheel head. You can go too fast when you're doing this. If you go too fast, you'll get a spiral on the inside. So again, every time that wheel rotates, you need to let it make a full rotation before you move your hand. So if you start, if you're going down and you start to see a spiral happening on the inside and it starts to get really wobbly, it's because you've gone too fast and you've set it off center. Um, at this point, if it was a little bit wobbly, let's say I got a little wobbly, <laughs> I can come back in and kind of grab all sides and just give it some, a little bit of compression and get it back on center. So I've gone all the way down to the wheel head. I can then practice taking this clay, and kind of pulling it towards me. This is helping to kind of open the shape. It's something you'll do when you open a form as well that does have a bottom, okay? And I want these centered shapes to be about an inch to an inch and a half thick, okay? So this is pretty good. Um, you can try, you know, uh, com just compressing a little bit with your fingers and making it even. So that has just sort of evened out that to be a little bit thicker. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna start making some, um, some shapes and profiles. So the first thing I'll do is I'll come in with my metal rib and I'm just taking off the excess slip. When you come in with a rib, you wanna come on a 30 degree angle when the clay is coming into it. If I try to do this over here, it will get stuck. Okay, and then you can stop your wheel. Uh, so I, you're always gonna come in on that kind of angle. I'm gonna get the slip off of the inside. I'll do the same thing there. Just 
squeeze out my sponge. Just kind of clean that up a little bit. Um, and now I'm gonna take my wooden knife tool and I'm going to kind of just cut in down here at the bottom. Again, this is something, these are all, this may feel a little bit um, elementary, but everything you're doing is a part of wheel throwing and what we need to do in order to get a piece off the wheel or finish it up. So I'm just, I'm compressing down here. I'm flipping my tool over to grab that extra clay. And that's making a clean space for my wire tool. It's also gonna make a really nice space for where I can pick this thing up off of the, the wheel head. Um, but what I want you to do is I want you to, you know, practice using your different ribs or your different tools. And of course, next time I think we need to set that up over here because I'm doing everything over here. So I'm gonna kind of adjust like this for a moment. You might wanna move Bray if you can't see. Um, so we can get this. So you can use different parts of your tools. So I'm just gonna hold this, again, on an angle. I'm just gonna hold it in. And I can make this kind of accordion shape. And it's gotten a little off center here, but I'm just gonna roll with it. So maybe I'll just do this accordion thing on the inside and outside of this whole thing. And I'm gonna make an, an indent undercut on the inside, also with this tool, just like I did on the outside, so that we can have a clean space to grab it. There are some little burrs that are like kind of happening on, you know, on the outside. I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, if, if you wanna worry about it, <laughs> I mean, you can. You can come just with your damp, dry sponge. And if you wanna soften that, you can, but then, you know, it takes away that sharp edge. So what I want you to think about is different kinds of line quality. Um, anytime you reintroduce the sponge onto this, it's gonna add more slip and it's gonna make it harder to pick up. So we're also practicing moving things on and off the wheel. Um, so, you know, so this is a sort of a bowl-ish form without a bottom. Um, and now I can stop with this. Apparently this wheel doesn't need to adjust that foot pedal. And then I can take my wire tool, you're gonna to wrap it around your fingers so it's tight like floss. Hold it tight, push it into the wheel head and pull it under. If it's looped, it will cut the bottom half of your thing off. Um, and then I'm gonna clean off my hands. If you have clean, dry hands, it's easier to pick this stuff up. Alex, can you give me a board? One of the plaster boards is fine. To the left. Yep. So, clean hands, drying on the apron. And then I'm gonna grab this using kind of the underside of my hand and just kind of lifting this up, okay? Slide your hand under, move it over. 